Okay, so what is number seven asking for there? Yeah, were you guys my class that called it prime prime? I can't remember that was the other, okay, that was my AP class, and those called it prime prime. All right, so we want the second derivative. You can't jump straight there, so you have to get the first derivative first. So derivative of E is itself, it's just gonna be E to the power G of X. Hey, it looks like we just recopied the problem. But then you have to chain on the derivative of G, so times G prime. So when you go to do the second derivative, now what rule are you working with? Product rule, okay? So it is the first thing times derivative of the second. So derivative of G prime, G prime prime, G double prime, plus the second thing times derivative of the first. Now, when you do derivative of e to the power g of x, it is e to the power g of x times g prime of x. Now, again, I won't make you rewrite that here, but they're going to write it a little bit differently. Do you see how both of these have an e to the g of x? If they both have it, you can factor it out. Actually, maybe I will write this for you. E to the G of X gets factored out. What's left from both terms once you, it's GCF, it just looks really awful. What's left? Yeah, G double prime plus, now it's G prime times G prime. So it's G prime squared, weirdly. Anything I see on AP Classroom, I'm going to try and show to you because I just want to leave no stone unturned. I want to show you everything. All right, this is another chain rule. First link in the chain is E. So it's itself. It's going to look like you just copied the problem. E is like that. It's just itself, which is great. Because the cotangent is inside of the E function. So the next is going to be the fourth power and then the cotangent. So it's e to that stuff. Now we're going to do derivative of that stuff. So you would bring the four down. It would drop to a three. That's the next link in the chain. And then you have to link on the derivative of cotangent. So, you know, by the day of the test, you have to have them memorized. So derivative of cotangent. Good. Quizlet paid off. Again, that's all really one thing. The only thing to clean that up is they might take the negative and the four and write it out front as a coefficient. Do you get what I'm saying there? Like negative four might be out front. Just if it's written different, I don't want you to get it wrong. Yeah, like the negative four might be out front. Because again, I just don't want you to get the right answer and not be able to pick A, B, C, or D. So the derivative of X is just one. Um, so that's like, you can if you feel like it. The most commonly missed thing with this is people treat the negative one like an exponent. It's not. And this is why I prefer them to be written as arc sign because then that doesn't happen. This is that inverse one. I did throw it on the Quizlet. I think it's on there. Does anyone remember it? Or do you remember sort of what it looks like? Because if it's multiple choice, if you remember any part of it, you'll probably be able to guess the answer. The one it, yeah, like if you remember it's one over and then has a square root, you'll probably be able to pick the answer. Do you get what I'm saying? Like you need to remember at least that much. But what goes in the square root is one minus, now the rule says x squared, but it's this stuff squared. So you'd have to do two times seven, which is 14. It would be e to the 14x. It's e to the seven x squared. Seven times two is 14. Did you come with me there? Okay, and then you would have to chain on, so I'm going to put it in the numerator, the derivative of e to the 7x, which what would be the derivative of e to the 7x? e to the 7x times 7. Again, I get that that looks awful, but it's multiple choice. So if you keep your head and you stay like sane enough and stay calm enough, you'll probably be able to pick the answer choice. Yeah, I just, instead of writing dot and then putting this stuff, I just put it in the numerator because that's how you'll see it. 
All right, uh, find f prime of zero. So we're going to get the derivative and then we're going to plug in zero. So we'll have two derivative of tangent. Good, good job. Perfect, no chain rule, it's just secant squared. Plus derivative of nine e to the x, nine e to the x. There were no chain rules there, which was nice. Now we're gonna plug in zero. Where is zero on the unit circle? To the right. It's the point one zero, good. Secant means you're gonna flip that one. One over one is one, and then one squared is also one, okay? And then one times two is two. Plus e to the zero, one times nine is nine. And so the math you're doing there is two plus nine. No, now if you were to put equals 11 up there, that's a linkage error. And that's why I tend to write f prime of x equals and then f prime of zero equals separately before I even start the problem because then I won't link them together. All right, um, so here, I'll show you. I'm gonna do that again. We're gonna get the derivative f prime of x and then we're gonna plug in four. So if you write it separately, let, thank you for bringing that up because I was doing it, but I didn't say it. If you write them separately like that, you won't make a linkage error. So just set it up and then go fill it in. Uh, what rule is it? Oh, All right, so denominator times derivative of the numerator. So what would be the derivative of e to the negative 3x? e to the negative 3x times negative 3. And so I would just put the negative 3 out front. Minus the numerator times derivative of the denominator, which is just one. And if you're at the point where you don't feel like writing that, that's fine, over denominator squared. And now we're gonna plug in four and we're gonna have to boil it the whole way down because it's gonna be a multiple choice question, okay? So four, to, uh, four minus two, two times negative three. We did four minus two is two, and then two times negative three, negative six e to the power negative 12. How did I get negative 12 out of that? Plugging in four. Negative three times four is negative 12, right? Minus uh, e to the negative 12 over, uh, what do we get if we plug in four there? Uh, two squared, which is four. And then you can put these together because they're like terms. Negative six of something minus another one of something is negative seven of that something. And I think they might have left it like that, but just to be sure, in case if they like fix the negative exponent, it would look like that. I can't remember. I can't remember everything in the world, but negative exponent means it goes to the denominator. So just in case, that's how you would fix that. Slope of the tangent line. Oh my gosh, guys, what does that mean? Derivative. So you're gonna find the derivative and then you're gonna plug in negative two. Again, write it separately, then you won't do a linkage error. So how do you do derivative of ln? That's one over the stuff. And then you chain on the derivative of that stuff, which you can either put a little dot or you can just put it in the numerator. What would be the derivative of yeah, negative two? Perfect. Uh, and then we're gonna plug in negative two. So I'll be negative two over, what would that come out to be? Nine plus four, so 13. Not every problem is gonna be really hard. Like some of them will be easy. That one wasn't too bad. What on earth does this mean? Second derivative, Second derivative. okay. And if you don't wanna write all that, you can just write y prime and then y double prime. Like you don't have to write it that way. It's gonna be a multiple choice question. So derivative of e to the x to the fourth. Well, it's going to be e to the x to the fourth times. Good. How'd you get that? It's the derivative of x to the fourth. So when you do a derivative of that, now you need a, which rule? Product rule. Good. So it's going to be the first thing times derivative of the second, 12x squared, 
plus second thing times derivative of the first, which is going to be e to the x to the fourth times 4x cubed. Now, I think in multiple choice land for that one, they did factor it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. What do both of these terms have? It's GCF. What have they both? They both have that E part. So that E to the X to the fourth. They both have that. In fact, I'm going to scribble that out. So we took that out. That's gone. Um, what else have they both got? Uh, and a, oh, good. I heard both of them. So 4X squared as well. Gosh, that looks awful. All right, parentheses. And we're going to put what's left once we divide that out. So I already scribbled out the E's. We're just dividing out a 4x squared. So if you divide out 4x squared from this part, there's be 3 plus. And if you take out 4 and then an x squared, you'd be left with uh, just an x from that, but then this part as well. So it would be 4x to the fourth. Like if we take out this 4, and if you take out an x squared, this is just a 1x, but then you have 3 more there. like. Algebra. Oh, it was just about perfect timing wise. I'm going to do this last one and then we'll do our break. It's a chain rule. So E is itself. And then you chain on the derivative of the X to the fourth, which is fourth. It happened again because we had to take the derivative of it again for the second one. All right. And then um, we'll do this one and then we'll do our break. What rule do you need? All right, quotient. So it is ln of x times derivative of the numerator is 3 minus numerator derivative of the denominator, which would be 1 over x and then over ln of x squared. Can I bring this up? This happened one year, and it was the year I taught online at home, and I think that may have been part of the problem. But I had an inordinate number of people write this like that. Please, can no one do that? That's not a thing. Okay? I get that for the trig functions, we put the squared in the middle, but for ln, it is not like that. Please don't do that. I think there was a lot of like miscommunication because I was teaching like through Zoom. So I don't blame them or anything, but please don't do that. All right. And then just to clean that up a little bit, one of these X's is going to cancel. So it would be three ln of X minus three over ln of X squared. No, you're allowed to do that because you're just simplifying. It's still the same thing. Now, if I plugged in a number and linked it with an equal sign, that's where it's a problem. All right, we're gonna do a real quick, just three minute break. All right, so again, not every problem is gonna be super difficult. Like there'll be some hard ones in there, but this one's not bad. Find F prime of two. So we're gonna get the derivative and then plug in two. So what would the derivative of that function be? Nine. Yeah, nine, the five goes away, plus one over X. Good, see, they're not all gonna be super difficult. Like that was okay. And then we're just gonna plug in, what are we plugging in? Two, so nine plus a half. Because it's multiple choice, nine plus a half is not going to be an answer choice. Um, it would be nine and a half. Do you know how to turn that back into a like improper fraction? Yeah, nine times two is 18 plus one is 19. Again, you got to be able to pick A, B, C, or D. What is ever be a I mean, I guess it could be, but usually for non-calculator stuff, they're not going to go for a decimal. It's usually a fraction. All right. Do you see this F negative one there? What does that mean? Inverse, <laughs> like on the paper. All right, this is where you're going to make your little tables. It's like a scavenger hunt. You're going to be okay. I think what is really tricky about these, because I'll give you that, 
These problems in particular, they usually give you unused information. They give you more numbers than you need and you have to figure out what's the extra stuff and that's difficult because it's like, well, why is this other information here? So they do tend to give you more than what you need. I always start with the find. Find G prime of three. That means I want three to go here and whatever lands there is my answer. And then that, so then that gets the ball rolling. Three is also going to go here. And so now we're going to look at the table. So you need to find the F column where there's three. Do you see that right there? So the X value is one. That means this would be one. It's not really necessary to put that one there. I just do it to be thorough, basically. This is one, three. That's going to be three, one. And then what is the F prime column? That's what you're looking for. Seven. Seven. So what is your answer? One seventh. You just reciprocate that. But do you see how many numbers in the table didn't even get used? That's hard. It is. Let's try it again. Make your little tables. And, and But I do respect the, hey, I don't like this topic. Do you remember me saying you're going to just need to pick and choose? And if this is one of those things where you're like, I'm going to need to let this one go, as long as you nail everything else, you'll be okay because what's a good grade? Okay? So you can't stress about it. If you read the question and you let it start to bother you, this is me preaching a little bit, but it's important to hear. If you read it and you let it start to bother you and that anxiety hits you and you get real upset, then you're going to mess up the things that you do know how to do. So if this bothers you, skip it. Okay? All right, let's see what we got. We got a function. We know that they're inverses. G of one equals two. So I know I can put the one and the two there. And that means over here, I can put two, one. And I'm finding G prime of one. So it's a good thing the one is right here. Whatever lands in this box is our answer. Now I haven't done any calculus yet. So what do we probably need to do? A derivative. And it's not going to be a bad derivative. Look at this function. What's the derivative of that? Good. And now here's where it's tricky. Do you plug in a one or do you plug in a two? Why? Good. Why is it the two? It's F. Okay. We're looking at this table. So plug in two. Two squared is four times six is 24. That means our answer 124. Cool. I got you there. Good. What's wrong? You like those two? I like them too. I think they're okay. All right. Equation. You need two things, a point and a slope. Good news. They gave you the point. It's right there. We just need a slope. Slope comes from derivative. What rule do you need? Actually, there's a couple. Product rule first. These are your two things, your two functions, and then there will be a chain rule. Okay, so product rule is the first thing. I have to compliment you guys though. You guys are great at figuring out which rule you, every time I say, which rule are we gonna use? You guys are on it. Like, and that's half the battle, right? First times derivative of the second. Now this is where a chain rule comes in. You're gonna bring down the two, leave all that stuff the same. It drops to a one. I wrote it there so you can see the one, but you don't need to put that. And then what are you gonna chain on? Good, derivative of that stuff, which would be negative three. Good. So let's recap where we are in the product rule. First, derivative of the second. So then it would be plus the second thing, derivative of the first, which you catch a break there, it's just two. Usually when they do a product rule, one of them is the harder one and one is the, like they give you one that's an easier one, all right? Uh, what are we plugging into that? One, that was a valid question. There was a lot going on there. One is your X value. So that's what we're plugging in, which is good. One's an easy number to work with. The only number better would be zero. All right, so if you plug in one, this part's two. Let's see, one minus three, negative two times two would be negative four times three would be positive 12 plus, all right, what are we still plugging in one? One minus three would be negative two squared is four times two 
is 8. So what do we get for our slope? That would be 24 plus 8, 32. Cool. And then all you have left to do is write the answer. Y minus 8, good, equals 32. Now, again, I can't remember everything in the world. The answer might look like that, or sometimes they distribute this and like add over the eight. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they get it into y equals mx plus b. I believe you guys could do that though, all right? Here's your L'Hopital's rule. You're gonna write limit as x goes to zero, and you do the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. It's separate, it's not a quotient rule. So let me cover this up. Derivative for ln, it would be one over that stuff, and then you chain on the derivative of that stuff, which I'm just going to put it in the numerator. So the derivative of 5e to the x, 5e to the x. The 4 is a constant, so it's gone. Huge fraction bar. <laughs> derivative of sine is cosine. That looks like fun. We're going to plug in 0, though. 0 is a good number to deal with. e to the 0. 1 times 5, 5. This part would be 5 minus 4, which is 1. And then cosine of 0, it's 1. And so the answer to the whole thing is 5. You do not want to do this as a limit. Instead, you want to recognize that it means what? Derivative. So it's what's the function, take the derivative, and then what number are you plugging in? Remember we did a whole worksheet of these? You need to recognize that it's that x plus h pattern. So what's the function? Sine, the derivative is cosine, and what are we plugging in? It's not zero. Hi. Here's the unit circle. Where's pi? left. That's the point negative one comma zero. Cosine is the x part. So negative one. I want to do all this, but we'll see what happens. Oh, no, wait, we have until 11 after. Oh, I can get it. We have 20 minutes. I can totally do it. We'll get this all done. It'll be good because you guys are paying attention. All right. Letter A. Write an equation. All right. You need two things. A point and a slope, plus you. So what are we plugging in for x? Zero. And you're gonna plug zero in right here. Now they actually tell you what f of zero is. If you look in the given part, what is f of zero? Four, Four. so this would be seven fourths. They're gonna give you everything you need because they can't give you an undoable problem, right? Slope comes from derivatives, so y prime equals, and what rule do you need for this? Quotient, okay? It's going to be the denominator times derivative of the numerator. Now, that's actually kind of helpful because the derivative of 7 is nothing, like a constant, like derivative of just a number is going to be 0. So that whole thing is going to go away. Can you allow to just write 4? Uh, this part was 4. f of 0 was 4, so it was 7 over 4. Does that make sense? It Well, that's because they're going to word it as confusing as possible. It is not you. It's confusing. Right? Uh, where was I at? Minus the numerator. And then what? Yeah. Derivative of denominator, which is f prime. Perfect. Over f of x squared. Now, this is where a linkage error sometimes happens, is people will put equals and then start plugging in a value. Don't do that. Now, I kind of ran out of space. The way you can get around that is just don't put an equal sign. Just don't put anything, okay? We're going to start plugging in zero. This part's gone. So in the numerator, we've got negative 7, f prime of zero. All right, they already gave us f prime. It's right here. So let's see, f prime of zero. Cosine of zero, one, this part's zero, so that's gone, minus six. 
So negative five, good. Over uh, f of zero squared, f of zero, four, so squared, 16, so 35 sixteenths, and then you just write the answer. I don't have the scoring guideline in front of me, but typically it's a point for doing the quotient rule, a point for getting the 35 sixteenths, and then a point for the answer. Typically is how they do that. So it's usually three. All right, second derivative at three. Well, we got to get the first. Oh, wait, didn't they give us the first derivative? We have f prime. Yay. Okay, so f double prime, you're just going to do the derivative of that. So derivative of cosine. Good, it is negative sign, and then you would have to chain on a two. So it's negative two sine of two x minus, what would the next part be? Three x squared, and then six is a constant, so that's done. And then we're gonna plug in three. Here's the good news. When it is free response, you don't have to simplify anything down. So all you're going to do is put in three and walk away. So it would be negative two sine of six, whatever that is, minus, and you can leave it like that. Now V27, but you don't have to do that. Say you messed it up in your head and you wrote 81 instead of 27 or something silly like that. You know, then it'd be wrong. So just do nothing. That's it. All right. Uh, we're going to get G prime, and then we're going to plug in one. What rule is this one? It is chain rule. It's like F got hungry and H square root of all that stuff. There's three links in the chain. The most outside one is F. So it's F prime of that stuff. Oh, I love that. You guys come with me on that. F prime of that stuff times the derivative of that stuff. Derivative of square root one. Thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys make me so happy. I feel like you listen to me when I talk. It's awesome. And then there's one more link. <laughs> the Good. Okay, so that would be what? 8x cubed. And you're going to plug in one and then walk away. So if you plug in one here, um, what would that be? Two plus seven is nine. Square root of nine is three. Now you do have to actually evaluate F prime of three, okay? But they gave us F prime, it's right here. So you just plug in three and leave it alone. Like this is F prime, we're just gonna plug in three. So it'd be cosine of six minus three cubed minus six, whatever that is. You just leave it alone. You can't do cosine of six without a calculator anyway, so whatever. Times, all right, I forgot what we're plugging in. One, plugging in one. Uh, that's gonna be the same thing there, right? Yeah, so square root of nine is three times two is six. So times one, six times eight. So when you plug in one to this, one to the fourth is one times two is two, two plus seven is nine, square root of nine is three. Uh, so we had to do F prime of three. So I came back up here to F prime and I just plugged in three and then I left it alone. Because G was in terms of F. If that makes sense, which kind of does. not Again, same thing I was answering here. It's not you. They are going to write it in the most confusing way possible. But G equals F of stuff. So when we did G prime, it involved F prime. Both very good questions. Okay. And then what does this mean with the little negative one? Inverse. Draw your little uh, tables. Where does four go? X on 
This one, good. And whatever lands here is our answer. Where else does four go? F. They gave us that one. Where F is four, go back up to the beginning. They have to give it to you in some capacity or you have to be able to find it. They can't give you an undoable problem. Do you see that? Zero, four. Now what? Good, plug the zero into F prime. We're gonna do F prime of zero. I feel like we did that one already, but I feel like that's what I wrote up here, isn't it? Cosine of zero is one minus six. Okay, negative five. Okay, now for a three response question, I don't know that they'll allow you to just leave it like that and circle your answer. So I would just, just to make sure they give you the credit, like just go ahead and write that to like, I would hate for them to not give it to you because that is the answer. Oh, I would 100%. I feel like when you circle it, that's indicating that's my answer, but just to like make sure. All right. <laughs> Funny story. I was working out this answer key yesterday and I forgot that this was calculator allowed and I started trying to do it without a calculator and I uh, almost cried. So you get a calculator for this one. Can you make sure you're in radian mode? It's, it's not bad with a calculator. I tried to do it without it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. All right, you have a table, which should make you be like, yes, all the numbers we need are in that table. And then they give you this awful function. Uh, so let's see how it goes. Estimate G prime of two. Derivative means slope. So if you wanna estimate at two, the points you're gonna use are one and three. So don't be too proud to write the points down. It's one comma negative one and three comma five. If you're like, hey, why didn't she use the G prime column? I know there were a few of you that were thinking that. That would be doing a derivative of a derivative, which would be a second derivative, right? So you just want the regular old points. All right, how do I do a slope? What's this gonna be? Good, so five plus one over, please do nothing to that. If you subtract it wrong, it's gonna be wrong. Now that's usually only worth one point, but you should all get it. Oops. All right, let A be this function. Find A prime of one. So you're going to get the derivative, plug in one. And usually it's a point for one thing and a point for the other. So it should be two points. What is your derivative uh, of A? Good, don't overthink it. F prime plus G prime. So f prime of one, this is your function. How do I make my calculator do f prime of one? Math eight, everybody type this. Math eight, d dx, you're gonna put in that awful function. Be really careful with parentheses. Ooh, I didn't go over this. Hold on, pause for one second. You don't have a cotangent button. What's the reciprocal of cotangent? Good. So you would write this in your calculator as ln of x over tangent of that stuff. Remember, they are never going to give you a nice function. It's never going to be pleasant. They're going to give you something awful. Okay. But you need to type it like this because you don't have a cotangent button. And if you do alpha y equals, that'll give you the uh, fraction bar. So it should look like that. I'm gonna wait to hit enter to give you all a chance. Oh, I dropped a parenthesis on the LN after I said, hey, watch out for those parentheses. Again, they are never gonna give you something pleasant. It is always gonna be awful. I'm sorry. Did anyone get a decimal, wanna share? I think that's what I got to you. Good. How many decimal points do you need? Three. So 0. 0.575. 0.575. All right. Plus, now you catch a break on that one. G prime of one. Go to your table. What's G prime of one? Two. That's the answer. 
No, please stop. My answer key won't go any further. So if you do, that means I have to figure it out and mark it wrong, probably. Okay, what rule do you need for this one? Product, you're gonna do a product rule and then plug in three. You get a point for writing out the product rules. Isn't that cool? It's a point for writing it out and then a point for getting the answer. All right, so that first part, F of three, you're not gonna do math eight. You just wanna plug three into this. So just from the home screen, hit alpha Y equals, and then just plug in three. You know, plug in three to all of that. It should look like that. And whatever you get, three decimal points. Can anyone confirm they got the same thing as me? Heads not, maybe? Okay, cool. Okay, and then we're gonna do G prime of three. That's the easy one, because it's in the table. What's G prime of three from your table? Seven? Perfect. Plus G of three, again, G is the easy one, it's the table. G of three, five? And then F prime of three. Look, let me show you shortcut. Do you see how on my, my I almost said my computer, on my couch, it's kind of like a mini computer. Do you see how I already have a math eight with this all typed in? Just watch. I'm gonna go back up, I'm gonna bring it back. And the only thing I need to do is change the one to a three. Yeah, that's because I made up this problem. And it turned out that way because I looked at what was on AP Classroom and then I made a problem to mimic it. You know how I always do that? Like I call them the sibling problem. All right. Uh, what was it? 2,680 points. Oh, I ran out of room. Thank you. 892. Please leave that alone. Please. All right. One more. I can do it. What rule do you need for this one? Quotient. And then we're gonna plug in two. G is easy, it comes from the table. F is difficult, it comes from the calculator. However, I'm gonna show you that same trick. This one's gonna go faster because we already have it typed in. You can just go back and change the numbers, okay? G of two, oh, I didn't say this out loud. Is it like, you know, the quotient rule at this point, I can make that assumption. All right, G of two from the table. Four, good. F prime of two, go back up and get your uh, mass eight and just change the three to a two. It'll be a large number. Once you type it once, you don't have to again. You can just go back and change the one number that you need to. Did anyone else get 4,033? Okay. And then you wanna do F of three, which watch, I'm gonna go back up. It's not a derivative, it's just F of three. So I'm gonna go back and get this one. Or no, I'm sorry, we're not doing three this time, we're doing two. Do you see how I did three though? I'm just gonna go back and change all those threes to twos. Oh, okay, then you did this one already. So the derivative is the math eight one. It'll say ddx. Just plugging it into the function won't have that ddx. Negative 2.828. Uh, I truncate. You can round if you want. 
All right, and then where am I? I lost where I'm at now. G prime of two, look at your table. G prime of two, negative three over four squared. Ha. Huh. 